Please, uh, let's have our affirmation. Uh, page 50, I think 58, or is it 50? 58, page 58. Let's go to our book, page 58. We have our affirmation. And today being the fifth day, am I right? Or fourth day? Fourth day. And our affirmation says that I am African and have everything I need within me. I am an African and I have everything that I need within me. I am an African and I have everything that I need within me. Bless or say three times as usual so you follow me as i say i am an african and i have everything that i need within me i am an african and i have everything that i need within me Last one, we use some energy. <laughs> I am an African. I am an African. And I have everything. And I have everything. That I need. That I need. Within me. Within me. Let's give some thoughts. Let's give it some thoughts. Think about us. Dissect it dilated and let's see how this relates to you as a person not as a group but as a person because the first word that came out is I that means you I am an African then I have everything that I need within me Can someone start with us? We want someone to... How does this relate to you? Thank you. 
Yes, can someone also share with us? Who wants to share with us? I'm an African and I have everything that I need with you. I am an African and I have everything I need within me. I believe for me, that means that all of the sacrifices that my ancestors made, it was to help me survive and make it and learn and know who I am through all of their sacrifices and they paved the way Amen. for me and for all of us. Wow. Amen. Thank you. Maybe one or two people at the back, from the middle down. I am an African. I am an African and I have everything that I need within me. I am also a little controversial. Okay, so he say that if I have everything that I need within me, why do I need a savior? Yeah. Sometimes I say people say they need a savior. Why do I need a savior? Because we, we, we got to create somebody to save us from ourselves. And again, I know I was born in Jamaica. There is another Jamaican guy who said, if a pig born in a cow pen, he's still a pig. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so no matter where I was born, I'm not no Jamaican American. Oh, yeah. I am I am just African. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No matter where I was born. Give me the cow. I am an African and I know this is true because what lies in me um, I knew that I was special growing up because I used to always have people talk about my skin growing up in America how dark I was and I knew it was something special in me because I used to get talked about a lot. <laughs> Mainly, like I said, it was my skin complexion. And as I grew up, I started to educate myself about who I was and, you know, just about my African just history in general because they don't teach us that in America. Um, so, when I really, really looked at our history, I really understood the power that lies in me. And there you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Chenevo. When you say you are an African, immediately you open your mouth and say, I am an African. Do you feel that there is something that dawns on you immediately? Oh, yes. Uh, I traveled to South Africa. I've been going there a lot. I took some tour there. I also do tour guiding in South Africa. And then we were stopped by police. And when we had a, a lady tour guide, and that lady from Zimbabwe, and they were asking her of a national ID. And she said, unfortunately, she left it at home. The husband is a South African. And the police were ready to pick her to the station. Then I said, no, I will not allow. The police inspector looked at my face and said, why? I said, yes. What is the difference between Zimbabwe and South Africa? Are we all not one? She's not a criminal. She hasn't stolen. Why are you taking her to the police station? Then one of them looked at me and said, you yourself, you look like a Nigerian. You're a Nigerian. <laughs> As I say it again, for the third time, for the fourth time, there was a, a female police. She was just laughing. I said, you know what? Let me tell you. I am a Ghanaian. 
Say what? Are you a Ghanaian? Yes, I'm a Ghanaian. He said, let me see your passport. Let me see your ID. I said, I don't have my passport here. I don't have my ID here. I can tell you I'm a Ghanaian. I was very proud. And then the one of the, uh, uh, the inspector came and said, what did you say? I said, I'm a Ghanaian. I'm not a Nigerian. I have to save this sister and all those people in there. So, oh, Ghana, wherever you go, you are so proud. And I was very happy about that. So who you are, your identity should not get missing. Why are you here? Because you are an African. You are coming back to see, to feel and experience what went on so many years ago. Is it true? <laughs> Let me tell you a story. And this is a true story. There was a, a group, now, my uncle is a professor at Iowa State University in the US. And he's a soil scientist. And Iowa State University, they are all whites, not blacks, all whites. They will not admit you if you are not white. My uncle is the first black after the school was established in 18 something. He brought a group down. Every year he comes with a group. What did they do? They are here to test the soil, water, and a whole lot. <clears throat> I met him at the airport. And then after introducing myself and everything in the bus, <clears throat> one of the ladies, the first person who asked the question, as a white says, excuse me, governor, uh, I learned that Africans live on tree. Is it true? Then I said, yes. Clap for her. Everybody put their hands together. So I would like to see that tree. I said, don't worry. You will see that tree as we drive along. And she said, OK. Somewhere after three days, she came again and said, you haven't shown me the tree. I said, open your eyes. Yeah, the trees are all over. Open your eyes and be observed. Right. said, OK. I said, take more pictures. So said, I will do that. Will you show me that tree? I said, I will show you that tree. <laughs> Middle part of the uh, tour, she also came and said, you haven't still shown me the tree. I said, ah, haven't you seen it? He said, no. I said, open your eyes. Why that? Take more pictures. I will show you before you leave. I said, OK. <laughs> At the end of it, they were to fill a form before they will be transferred to the airport. And she, I asked, is there any more questions? She left her hand uh, and said, I'm so sorry to say this, but I have to say it from my heart. And then her head goes like that. I have to say it. <laughs> I was the first person to ask a question. And uh, I'm going to be the last person to ask a question. You've answered thousands and thousands of questions. All the students have answered their questions. But as for me, you never answered. I was like, what? You? What was your question? <laughs> I wanted to see that because we were taught that African sleeps on trees. Is it true? And he said, yes. You have found it, yes, but I haven't seen it. You never showed me that tree. Now we are leaving the country. What am I going to say? I said, okay. Let me ask you a question. When you came, did you see any human being sleeping on a tree? He said, no. We visited the forest. That's why I said, open your eyes. Did you see any human being built his house on top of a tree? He said, no. Where were you sleeping? Yes, I'm, I sleep in a beautiful hotel, this and that. What type of food do you eat? She's made mention, I said, you know what? <coughs> what I want to tell you is that you have been wrongly educated. Wrongly educated. And she was like, what? I said, yes. They told you.
do the wrong thing. Go and tell them, go and show them the pictures yes. that Africans never see. That's right. That's right. Let them know that you have been there. Mm -hmm. We went to the jungle. Show them the pictures that you never saw any Africans sleeping on a tree. We have houses. Show them the food. As we were talking, then the mother called. The mother wanted to know when are they arriving to pick them and all that. So the mother called. I said, hold on, hold on, my mother. I said, oh, okay, let me talk to your mother. Mom, how are you? Say, I'm fine. Oh, your daughter said, you are, you are a great teacher. I've been teaching her. I said, oh, yes, it's true. Oh, yeah, thank you. It's a wonderful job. I said, okay, have you seen her pictures? She said, yeah, she sent some pictures to me. Did you see any Africans sleeping on a tree? <laughs> the mother said, what? Is that what she told you? <laughs> I said, yeah, she said, you told her that Africans sleep on a tree. The mother was stuck, she couldn't see anything. I said, mom, it's never true, Africans don't sleep on a I said, we were told. I said, you were also indicated wrongly. <laughs> so she will send you the pictures and everything. We have houses, we sleep in rooms, we, sleep, we don't sleep on trees, we eat good food, natural food, yes. not only a food. I said all these things, then the woman started clapping, so that's why I'm happy that my daughter was there. She has learned a lot. Let me talk to the professor. I gave it to the professor. Professor, thank you so much for adding my daughter to your group. <laughs> and that's all that she said. <laughs> So you see, they have educated wrongly, but they are rather telling us that we have educated wrongly. So you come and experience and go and teach them. So as we have come, we should be ambassadors. So far as we are an African, we are telling or going to tell our own story. We will not allow anyone to tell our story for us. Let us tell our own story and let them know that what they heard was wrong. It's never true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>